welcome to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Chantel Seville. Now, this is actually my last week for a little while because, well, I'm kind of due hmm, next weekend. So lucky I made the show today because it's, it's a pretty exciting one and I'm so excited about our guest. You might not know who it is, but it's Honolulu Fashion Week here in Hawaii. And who better to have on the show than Kini Zamora, the Hawaiian fashion designer himself. He's an all-star from Project Runway and the CEO of Kini Zamora, the brand. So uh, let's welcome Kini. Thank Hi. you so much for coming on the show today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Oh, <laughs> my I was gosh. Like, Baby, stay in there. Please stay in there. Please stay in there. We have a show this week. <laughs> okay, hope we don't have it on here. <laughs> this is what I'm hoping to. <laughs> kind of neat, maybe. Right? Maybe not. <laughs> Just stop the camera if that happens. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure being uh, here on, on the Think Tech Hawaiians, you know, to have the last guest for a little while being yourself. This is oh going to be gosh. fun. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. <laughs> um, for those of you watching, we'll show during the show, we might take one caller with a special question for Keeney. So yes. we'll put up that phone number throughout the show. And if you're the lucky one, you can ask him a question. So oh boy. yeah, it's all about fashion. So yes. tell us, um, <clears throat> You are doing the runway show this weekend. Yes, I do. I have a fashion show um, on Saturday, November 12th at 2 p.m. for Honolulu Fashion Week. Um, and it's partnered with Reach the Runway uh, with Honolulu Magazine. Um, we put on a show. Honolulu Magazine actually does Honolulu Fashion Week every year. So, And it's the runway show. It's our third year doing it. Um, and it's an amazing event to bring out fashion enthusiasts here in Hawaii. Um, and it's grown so much since then. So you've been a part of it all three years? Yes. So, so you've done a runway year. show all three years? Yeah, I've done a runway show three years. So just looking back at what we've done, um, this is it's kind of crazy. Like this has been how fast the industry in Hawaii, fashion industry in Hawaii has grown. Um, and just knowing that three years in, we're still going strong. It's pretty Hawaii. special though. I think that you had a, a lot to do with, you know, bringing uh, like some attention to it being with your history and whatnot, which we will get into shortly. Yes. But um, <laughs> what does it mean to you to be a part of the Hawaii Fashion Week? Um, or Honolulu well, Fashion Week? Uh, being a part of Honolulu Fashion Week, I think it's uh, it's huge. It's it's a lot of weight on my shoulders, but then again, it's great to have that um, energy to put behind the fashion industry here in Hawaii um, and to help it grow and mold and just to be behind it such at a young age, I guess, here in Hawaii um, and just show people that there is fashionable, creative people here in Hawaii. And that's that was my whole thing going through Project Runway, uh, was showing people that there is creative people here. Um, we don't wear moo-moos, we <laughs> don't do that. I mean, there is that culture, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, and that's where we come from. But uh, there is other things that happen here. We do have elaborate couture outfits that we create. Um, and we don't live in moo-moos every day. We do it on Fridays. Um, and we know how to create Aloha different styles. Fridays. Yeah, yeah, little Fridays. But yeah. there's so much beauty around here to, to inspire you to create exactly. things. I think that that's you know, from being, I guess, growing up in Canada and being in Australia and now being here, you just see such a beautiful island. And of course. Full of, and, and just so, like so much soul and depth. I think perhaps that's what shows through through your creations. Of course, yeah. What, um, what's the latest collection you have coming up on the... Oh, so we have, um, we're creating our Spring Summer 2017 collection. Um, and that was inspired by actually a traveling couple um, going to a destination. We are in a resort state. So I wanted to bring back the brand to a resort state. Uh, so a lot of the pieces that you'll see is from, is inspired by Hawaii. Um, things that we can use here, things that you can pair with other collections of mine, and things that you can use on the beach, uh, transforms into a cocktail event, into an evening event. So I really wanted to make a lot of pieces more versatile mm. and things that you can use uh, throughout the whole day. I That's mean, so good because when yeah. you get something, like whatever I buy, if I buy a dress, you can kind of wear it and everyone just knows that dress. Exactly. Whereas if you have versatile pieces, you can continuously reinvent your outfit and pair them with other things from your collection or someone else's and just totally. create your own style and I think that's really important. Too. Yes, of course. So I like it. Very yeah. good. Now, um, something that's really important to me and another reason I really wanted to have you on the show is Reach the Runway. Yes. Can you tell us about 
your involvement in, in Reach the Runway and what it's about and um, what it means to you, really. Um, so Reach the Runway is a great opportunity. Uh, Stacy and Lenny, last year, they had partnered up with a bunch of amazing young creative kids that wanted to learn the industry in fashion, photography, hair and makeup, graphics, and they had a great course for them to learn all of these things behind the scenes. And this year, they had an amazing um, course as well, too, and they put together uh, an amazing team to help out with that as well. And it's just great for Hawaii to offer that to these young kids. I didn't have that when growing up, and I didn't have anyone to really nurture me through that. The only thing I had was my aunt who taught me how to sew, and uh, she basically was the one who taught me fashion. And just going through whatever I knew and watching television and looking at magazines. So I think the kids are very fortunate to have this opportunity to network with industry people uh, at this level. It's I so think incredible. it's amazing. Like, these, these young girls, kids, yeah. are like, girls and some boys <laughs> yeah. um, are like in grade six, yeah. and they're able to network with a Project Runway <laughs> all-star. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and for a person like myself, I'm all about... I like connecting. Mm -hmm. Networking is not as much the word I like as connecting because you just gotta exactly. connect. But you're gonna connect with like-minded people. So whether you're, you know, in your 30s or you're 12, if you have a similar interest, I mean, there's connection there, that and that is. can really get you, get you far. Get you far, exactly. And they're working with not only me, but they're working with other celebrity stylists, hair and makeup people, photographers as well. And what they're doing is they're connecting with themselves as well too. They're actually growing a team at this young age. And they're growing themselves, you know what I mean? Like they're f befriending themselves at this young age. That and is very grow good. They're befriending other. themselves. Everyone, yeah. befriend yourself. Exactly. That is yes. Katie's you more. Befriend, befriend yourself. yourself. Yeah. It's so true, though, because in society, I mean, everyone's judging and this and that. Yeah. And when you have a focus and you have, like they say, your vibe attracts your tribe. So you got a focus, you got a vibe, you got something you're working on. You don't care what you anyone's care. saying about yeah. you. Like, oh, you're this, you're that, you're ugly, you're, you know, you can't run. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. I've got my thing I'm doing, I'm on my purpose. Exactly. So, I mean, and yeah. they're building their own team together. With me, when I build my team, it's, I, it's a team of uh, hair and makeup stylists, photographers. It's a team. It's everyone together working as a creative um, engine, I guess. And that's what they're building right now at this young age. And that's great that they get to put that together now um, and work at it at what, 10 or 13 years old, and that's how young they are, starting this whole thing now. And I'm 32 years old, and they're 13, so they get to start at, at this age. I'd imagine yeah. what they can achieve by the time they're like, all right. Because right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. um, I actually watched an interview or read something about when you were saying it's all about letting the people that you collaborate with, as you're saying, your stylist or your makeup exactly. artist, to really you know, nurture their own creative talent and give yes. them some, some guidelines, but mm -hmm. also open yes so whenever I do that I give them an inspiration it's all about the feeling and inspiration of what my collection is all about and then I offer it to them I don't tell them I want the hair and makeup to look like this the photography I want it to be like this it's all about getting them in the vibe and getting them excited about here's my inspiration this is what I thought about this season and then they come to me and get excited as well too I want people to get excited how I do about my collection and then they give me back their excitement about I think we should do this for hair and makeup um, or or I think we should do photography and lookbook like this or a campaign like this. Um, I think when you open up the creative juices into, I mean, a big bowl, I think it's, it's a lot better that way. And you don't peep, put people in a one-track mind like I want it to look like this. I think you put people in a box in that way and you want people to be more creative if you tell them an inspiration and you let them go free with it. And with Savvy Chicks, we're all about living our dreams and just really going out and pursuing <coughs> things that inspire us. Like, yes. like you're doing, you're a perfect <laughs> living example. And it seems like everyone around you is also doing what they love. Yes. Like, do you think it's possible for people to really live what their of talent course. and dream is? Yes, I'm one person to say that I guess I came from rags to riches. I grew up um, with a family that had basically nothing. My mother and father, tire man, and my mom worked at a bank, and I had to pay myself through college. I worked my way through college myself. Um, knowing that fashion was going to be my career, I had to really figure out what I was going to do to get me through and what I was going to do after college to make it a career. Was I going to make it my business at the end and what I needed to do? Um, it's drive determination. It's that sacrifice that you have to do at a young 
young age uh, to really fulfill your career at the end and really find out what you really love to do. Like how old um, how old were you when you realized and your auntie gave the sewing machine or was teaching you? Like how old were you at that time? Was it is fashion something you've always known that you've loved or? I, I think so. My mom always told me. I I think she, I, she said I started sketching at like eight. Oh, so it started with sketching. It started sketching. Yeah. Uh, I always wonder how and designers then, like do they start sewing? Do they start sketching? But I guess everyone's yeah. different. Yeah. So it started sketching and she said whenever we came around Christmas time or my birthday I always used to ask for pens and art. <laughs> stuff and then my aunt had a sewing class with me and my cousins at 10 years old and by the second class I was the only one there <laughs> that was sewing um, and that's when I realized like I could create stuff a 3d image and basically what I did was at it was about 14 or 15 years old where I sketched something out and my aunt helped me create it and I could realize in that moment I was old enough where I could press print on my brain and I could show people what was going on in my mind creatively. Um, so it was a great opportunity for me to show people what was going on. That's a big mind. challenge for a creative person to exactly. be able to actually articulate that in a way that other people can understand. Yes. I mean, there's so many different creative professions mm -hmm. and I find that a lot of times creative people get stuck because they can't express that. Express it, yes. <laughs> like, it's here, don't you understand? Yeah. And unless they're with other creative people, it can they be challenging to, yeah. to get that out. Exactly. And so you got yourself through college. What did you study yep. in college? I started a fashion technology in college here in Honolulu Community College um, to just further my education and just to see the world, I guess. I packed up right after college here and I went to FIT in New York and I stayed there for about a year and a half just to see New York. I didn't know anything about New York. I basically... <laughs> Little Hawaiian boy yeah. just gets out there like, I'm going to go. New York. Yeah. I got accepted to the college and I was like, okay, I'm going to go. Here you go. And I didn't Aloha. know where I was staying. Yeah. <laughs> Um, figured it out and it was something that I really wanted to do and just go for it and I did and it's something that's the drive that I wanted. I wanted to be a fashion designer. I knew this is all I knew. Like, Did you have a so. vision of runway and everything when you were young? Is that what you sort of saw for yourself or what did you you know, in your biggest light, see for yourself. I did. I, that's all I saw myself doing was just creating clothes and designing. That's basically what I saw my future as being. It's kind of cliche to say that, but I didn't see myself doing anything else. Was just doing that. Yeah. And so getting to New York, were you surprised about what is, you know, where are we? What is this? It was <laughs> kind of like a concrete jungle shock to me when I first got there. It was like, The oh island my boy? God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god, I didn't realize what I was getting myself into. Uh, but then I just had to get the hang of it. I, it was kind of fake it till you make it, and that's, that's it. what I did. <laughs> um, made it and kind of, I didn't know where I was staying. I had no place to stay. Um, my aunt's friend kind of lent me a couch <laughs> yeah. until I could afford to get a place. And then I had to travel from Jersey to school in the city. And it was just... You just made it happen. It. Made you it just, happen, you just, yeah. Just, make it happen exactly with um we've got so much to talk about in the next segment so i'm mm -hmm. very excited but i i did also uh watch something that you'd said about um where you get your creative inspiration like how you clear your mind and yes. then just go for it can you just give me a little insight yeah. on what that's all about so whenever i get inspiration or inspired i always have to clear my mind by i go to the beach a, a lot and to do that i just really go to beach alone i go out at six or seven o'clock in the morning and just look out in the ocean and just kind of appreciate what's around us. Sometimes we get to, we forget what's around us and forget how beautiful um, the land that we live in and we kind of forget that we live here. And I do that sometimes because I'm so busy with my life and what the business that I'm in. So I take that time and I sit and I just relax and kind of clear my mind and think about things and then it kind of puts me in a mood and a vibe and that clears me for my inspiration for my next collection. And it can be totally different I guess like totally, you can literally reinvent yeah. yourself from collection to collection exactly. just from clearing your mind. Just from clearing my mind and then, like things will kind of pop it while well, as I'm clearing my mind these little bits and pieces will pop into my mind like this will just resonate and stick in my mind and that will just stay and I will just go and put it on an inspiration board. Ooh. Yeah. Stay tuned because we want to be inspired more by Kini Zamora. This has been amazing. Thanks for tuning in to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii, and we'll see you in a minute. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced 
attitude in life. Join me. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Hibachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock uh, on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha! Welcome back to the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. We are celebrating Honolulu Fashion Week this week, and it's very exciting. We have an all-star Project One Way um, participant guest here, who is Katie Zamora. I <laughs> just tripped on my words there, but uh, I'm so excited. I want to hear all about his Project Runaway experience, and I know you do too, because I mean, what girl who loves fashion doesn't want to be on something like that? But before we get to there, I want to know how he got there. So. Let's go back. You told oh us that ever since you were young, you love fashion, you're sewing with your auntie, then you sort of found yourself, went to college, funded yourself to college because yes. you came from a family that wasn't just throwing money out your way and, and just doing <laughs> your thing. So that's, yeah. that's very inspiring. And then you go to college and then you get to New York. So where, where did you go after there? How so after there, I just, I came back home actually, um, figured out that the, the amazing thing was going through college, I figured out that the college there taught me everything that Honolulu Community College has already taught me. Um, when, I figured it, when I figured that out, I was amazed because Honolulu and Hawaii was teaching the things that New York was teaching, and it was kind of at that same level. So it was great to find that out. Um, and then when I got back home, I figured out, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. Was I going to start my business then? Um, at that point, I was taking in a little custom clients here and there. And I was working at PacSun. I was working at a retail store um, as a uh, manager there. And throughout that whole retail career, I wanted to figure out all the aspects of being a manager and mm. owning my own business. So, so you knew that you wanted to have a business. Was exactly. that always an intention? Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to know how, I knew I was going to have a retail store. So how was I going to run a retail store? Better to be a store manager and know the whole thing mm -hmm. of how to run one. Um, so I knew I learned visuals really fast, sales managing, how to manage employees and how to do that whole thing um, just from working there. And that's what I took all those tools. Um, I worked there for about two years. And after I basically got out of that world, I my foot down and was like, I'm going to just take that leap of faith and start my business. So were you actually still creating while you were working at the store though? You said yeah. you had a few custom clients just so you were keeping your craft alive yes. essentially. <clears throat> and But learning. Because yeah. I think often people, we, we want to just go do what we do. And, yeah. But you know, it does help to go work for someone else and learn a business perhaps. Yes. And, and have that hands-on experience with a lot of customers mm -hmm. as long as you're outlighting your yes. creativity. So it was working. It was, I was still doing my clients mm -hmm. here and there. And then I was still working my retail job. So it was just balancing both of it at the same time, and trying to. <laughs> trying to. <laughs> <laughs> trying to balance both of it. <laughs> trying to being the key word. But it's, it's really yeah. what you got to do when you're pursuing something you love. Exactly. Like, a lot of energy yeah. needs to be put in that. And then one, once one thing, uh, when the designing started to overtake my day job, mm -hmm. that's when I realized, okay, I can't do this anymore. Um, so that's when I kind of put my foot down and I was like, I need to take this leap of faith and start my business. And, and did you just start it as Keeney Zamora straight away? Yeah, that's when I started as that. Um, and then I just went straight into it as my full-time job and got more clients and I just kind of relied on that. And what kind of fashion were you doing at that time? Um, it was a lot of custom stuff. So I was doing pageants and proms and bridal stuff. So it was a lot of just people coming to me for these individual pieces. Um, and then I had to realize what, a, what I was going to do to make my bread and butter, I guess. So I started a Hawaii collection, stuff that people in Hawaii usually wear. Um, and at that point, I was kind of stuck. So it brings me to how am I going to let peop other people know of my brand, of who I am, and whatnot. So, of course, Project Runway has always been in my mind. I watched Yes, tell us all about seasons. the experience. Yes. So I tried out, when I first moved to New York, I tried out for, I think it was the first or second season, and then a couple of times after that. And that's always in, been in my mind. So uh, during that time where I quit my job and going into starting my business, I was like, okay, I guess I can try it out again. 
and I believe it was at my, that was my fifth time trying. Fifth time. Fifth, fifth time. time. Five. Five, five guys. times. So if you try once and it doesn't work, five. Yes. Some people try 500, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's awesome. Yes. There's people that tried out six times, so, or it's... But uh, just it, the fact that you times. just keep going back. I exactly. mean, that, that's what I think um, in society often we don't realize, oh, it didn't work. Okay. I, it I'm must fun. not be for me. My, I'm going to go this way. It's like, no, no. If, if it's meant for you, you just keep. Yeah. Like, Hello? Can I'm I come in here? Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Remember me, the island boy? Yeah. yeah. And, and for me, it was, I took every time that I went back, it was a critique and I learned from it. Mm. It was everything that they taught me and every little bit that they told me I needed to fix, I fixed and I tried and I always thought in my mind, of course, it was, why aren't you choosing me? And then it was the, <laughs> okay, I, I'm really listening to that. Like, that's the reason why they're not choosing me. Um, so the fifth time it went really far. I went down to, I think them calling me, asking me if I wanted to be on Under the Gun. And I was like, of course, like, it's a TV show, I'll do it. <laughs> like, it's more press for me and people to see my work and uh, exposure, see what we have yeah. exposure. It was free exposure, that's what I thought. Um, and then it was the denial letter. It was the casting that I didn't make. And then I was like, oh my gosh, this is the last. I was like, all right, what do I do? It put me down, but then I was just like, nope, let me just try my business. And it was just like full force with my business, even stronger. Um, and then they had emailed me one more time and was like, we have all your information. Uh, you basically don't need to come to LA because you have everything. <laughs> and But if you do want to come, here's your interview date with Tim Gunn and blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh, I have time. I'll just come, whatever. I kind of just threw my hands up and I was like, here's what I have. You're going to just take me for what it is. It's, it is what it is. And I basically did it like that. And I went in there with an attitude kind of like, here's my collection. I stand by it. I'm, this is me. Um, and they loved it. They took it and was like, yes, we want you on the show. And I kind of stood back and I was like, okay, <laughs> what did I do this time that was kind of different? Um, and then it was, it, the casting was different this year um, for regular runway because they flew us out to New York. Everything happened so fast. It was literally, I got the email and then a week later I was flying to LA. They told me, yes, I got the casting, I got um, to the finalist. And then a week after that, I was flown out to New York um, to do a live taping of them choosing the finalists and the cast for it. Um, I flew there on a Monday, got there on Tuesday. They filmed on Wednesday, um, announced the cast, and I got casted for it. And I flew back on Thursday. They emailed us and said, we're leaving in a week to be <laughs> filmed for six weeks. So everything happens within two months. And now this is during summer. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening really, really quick, and I have to be ready for this. And you had your business that you're running as well, because business. you amped your business exactly. up, because you got no Project Runway, no project like you amped business. the business. Yeah. Now. <laughs> now it's an amped up business and Project <laughs> Runway. So what am I going to do? I'm like, I have my business, now I have Project Runway, I'm going to be gone for six weeks, so what am I going to do? Um, and this is just a great opportunity, so it was just like, everything kind of happened really fast. Um, to being flown to New York in production, everything gets taken away. You're phone, computer, you're totally disconnected from everything. Wow. Um, you don't even get a call home. You don't even know anything that's going on. Uh, you're basically <laughs> shuttled from one place to another, so you don't even know if you're You would have missed election. You wouldn't even know yeah, who won. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you don't even know anything that's going on. Um, and throughout the whole process, you're just at all and kind of standing back, like, am I really being filmed right now? Am I... All the time. So you're being filmed pretty filmed much all the time. Pretty much you're woken up at 5.30 in the morning to be filmed till 12 o'clock at night. Wow. And being that I was on till I was the third runner-up, so I was third finalist, um, you are... I was there for the long haul. I was there for the whole time, <laughs> so it was like, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted and drained, not just physically, but mentally, because you're inspiration just kind of gets drained and yeah. you don't have time to prep during that two weeks of okay what am I going to do for the next six weeks like, but for your these collection by the way looked amazing that Thank is you. so <laughs> that is that was oh, pretty awesome <laughs> and it was just it was like that it was just like here's your challenge after challenge everyone sees a television show for a week and we think that you you guys think we have to we have a week to work on these things we literally have every other day wow. um, and it's about eight hour days of work it's not a full 12 hour day um, we wake up at five we sit around for another two hours get our challenge shop for another half an hour sketch for half an hour in the workroom for eight hours and then we're back in the runway the next day 
And what are the what are the um, like the mentors and judges and everything like? Is that is that pretty a pretty important part? Of they, they are. I I think a lot of people see it on television as um, they're being mean and cruel. But the thing is, they're in the industry. They know what to expect. They have been there before. So taking their critique is really important for us as designers, and we really have to listen to them because they've been there. Um, I think it's honest opinion. Tim, everyone always asks me if Tim is really how he is. He is exactly how he is on television. He's the nicest person ever. Um, he really gives your his honest opinion about your collection, your pieces that you make, and he's a great mentor. Um, Heidi's really fun on stage. She's <laughs> so she goofy cool. all the time. Super, super <laughs> cool. Um, Nina is great with her feedback because she's a magazine editor. She knows what people and consumers um, who are looking at the magazine will be seeing. Uh, so we have to trust her judgment. And Zach, of course, knows construction, so he knows what pieces should be made like or made to be built. So, of course, we're going to be, be critiqued on that. And so kind of all, stuff. all of that that you've taken from them, is that now what you've put together to show us at Honolulu Fashion of Week? Of course, <laughs> yeah. I think that's what I've, I've done like throughout my whole career now is like, I'm thinking of all of those things, is putting together that stuff. And it's, just bringing your Hawaiian spirit yeah. to... To all these different yes is knowing what I did throughout the show and then bringing it here to Hawaii and letting people know what we can do here and just hearing the judges critique in my mind whenever I'm creating collection is doing that and putting it throughout my I mean they don't have I don't have judges sitting at my studio telling me here's my critique about your collection so I have to put it in my mind what would this person think? you have what their voice in person, your, in yeah. your mind, exactly and what would Tim say about this and blah 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 so I have to really think about it myself and what these judges will think of um, on my own and it's kind of scary to think you know <laughs> but now you're um, on both sides you're actually I got just a couple things before we wrap up mm -hmm. but you're actually a men like a mentor yourself now yeah. so what's your advice to young girls with big dreams my advice, my big advice that I love to give people or young creative people is stay yeah, creative, creative to yeah. who you are. Um, don't worry about the followers and don't worry about if people will like what you do. Um, just stick to your creative pers personality and cre how creative you are. The followers will come after when they find out how creative you are. That's just my just big advice. It's, it's being authentic, really. And, exactly. you know, for all of those of you watching who are in Honolulu, do not miss, do not miss this yes. show. It's a <laughs> Don't miss my show. <laughs> to, so all the proceeds go to Reach the, Reach runway, the runway as well. Yes. So, I mean, yep. that's fantastic. And yeah. I, I don't know if there's still tickets for tonight. There's a, for the ball tonight. Do you know if there's still I, tickets yes, there available? Is, there are still tickets tonight. So you can go onto the website. I believe it's reachtherunway.com. Um, there's a few tickets left over. So come out to the... Uh, ball tonight, and then our show as well on Saturday. It's November 12th. There you go, at 2 o'clock. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> now you can't miss it. No yeah. excuses. Yeah, no excuses at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's right there. So 2 o'clock uh, on Saturday. We're going to be covering that as well. Very excited. The Savvy Chick Show will be there yes. capturing you awesome. on the runway. So we'll get to see what it's all about. And, I'm um, excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you so much for coming of down course. to the studio. Because it's a crazy me. week for yes. you, and yet you <laughs> seem to slot us in. So thank you.